I'm James Chow. Six years ago, I was in Paris for the global negotiations to save our planet. The experience gave me a ringside seat as countries came together in an important expression of solidarity. The Paris Agreement is a legally binding treaty that was ratified the next year in Hangzhou by China and the United States, the two countries key to its future. That future needs more than a document. In China, it means decades of real commitment by everybody. When China opened up to the world in 1978, it began a campaign to protect vast regions in its north, northwest, and northeast that were deeply impacted by sandstorms from the Gobi Desert. Ordinary people began planting one tree after the other. In 2019 alone, they planted trees on an additional 17 million acres, making China a nation where 23% of the land is now forested. This is a story we don't often hear, but it's happening, and it's been happening for a very long time. Two years ago, international researchers using data gathered by NASA satellites said China is leading the greening of the planet through tree planting and bold agricultural programs. Literally, billions of trees are absorbing carbon dioxide while pushing back against other problems, from the loss of soil to desertification. The champions are the women and men who've committed their lives to caring for our natural world, and their quiet yet life-changing effort is also seen on water. In January this year, a fishing ban came into effect across the Yangtze, the longest river in China and the third longest in the world. The moratorium will last 10 years, with the goal to rebalance the ecosystem. In all, 231,000 fishermen, many of them generations from the same family, have packed up their boats for dry land. They'll be reskilled for new job opportunities, but giving up the only life they've known is their contribution to the planet. Because of their sacrifice, fish populations will be restored. They're drawn from the 424 species of fish found in the Yangtze River, almost half of which are classed as endemic and thus completely unique to their geography. In fact, the river is one of the most aquatic biodiverse in the world. The Yangtze is, in a sense, the soul of the people because it crosses so many regions with their own cultures, economies, religions, and identities. Many of the communities are ethnic groups that are as diverse as the extraordinary ecology surrounding them. Depending on the part of the river, the need and impact of the ten-year fishing ban will be felt differently. It will give a chance to the Chinese sturgeon and other breeds on the precipice of extinction, including symbolically the Yangtze finless porpoise, whose fate has been compared to the survival of the river for which it is named. And that's the story of our natural world. Our futures are interlinked, and our opportunities rest on the actions of one another. Caring for what we've been blessed with is a moral, social, and economic investment. And the people who dedicate their lives to this end are the unsung heroes of this story. We thank them for what they give us. I am James Chow. You're watching the China Current. Follow us on social media at the China Current.